Hey everyone, and welcome to the message today. My name is Evan from Lifehouse Hatsugi, and I'm so excited to bring you the message today. And hey, we're in this series right now on healthy thinking. We're renewing our mind in different areas and how we can change some of our beliefs on something that might be a little off. Um, but today we're talking about money. And so who here likes money? Uh, you don't have to be shy. You can say you like money. Uh, who likes things they can buy with money? Uh, maybe it's like cars or, or nice trips or food or, or electronics. I, I personally like a lot of electronics. Uh, but we need money to buy things, right? We need money. Money is big in this world right now. And in fact, you can't do pretty much anything without money. Uh, most cultures are obsessed with money. And uh, a lot of people try to get the best job so they can get paid more, so they can get more money, and then more money equals more fun. And, so, and for a lot of people, more money means more security. But what does the Bible say about money? What should I be thinking about money? So there are a lot of things to unpack here today. And for some, this will be a bit of a challenge today. I'm going to challenge you on some of your thinking of money. And for others, I might set you free today with some of the ideas of money. You might be thinking negatively about money, and we're going to unpack all of those different areas today. And so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a change of heart with money. So we're going to look at two different men in the Bible. Both of them are very rich, and they have a great opportunity to use their money for good. So let's look at the first guy. This is known as the rich young ruler, and sometimes it says the rich man. But this was a guy, he loved Jesus. He was a Jewish guy. And he followed all of the Jewish beliefs. In fact, he stuck to the Ten Commandments really well. This guy was really, really educated, and he was a really good guy. And uh, he comes to Jesus asking him, what is the key to eternal life? What is the way for eternal life? And Jesus, uh, at the time, he was saying some really radical things about eternal life because the Jewish leaders were saying, you have to follow these 300 and something rules, and, and you have to do this thing and, and pray this way. and there was a lot of rules going around. And so the rich young ruler comes up to Jesus and says, well, what do you say? I heard, I heard something different from you. And so, he, uh, and so Jesus asks him, or Jesus tells him, sorry, what it means to get to heaven. He says, follow the 10 commandments. That's basically what he says. Follow the 10 commandments of the Old Testament. And the man says, yeah, I already do that. I've been doing that since I was a kid. And then Jesus surprises him with a completely different answer that he's not expecting. So let's look at the verse here in Mark 10. 20 through 27, it says, Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all of these commandments when I was young. Look, looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all of your possessions and give your money to the poor, and then you will have your treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. So wait, Jesus, uh, I, I thought I was asking you about eternal life. Like, I thought I was going to figure out how to, how to get to heaven. Like, what? Why are you talking about my money? Why are you talking about my possessions? I don't, I don't understand. And, and so Jesus tells the guy, you got to get rid of your possessions. You, you got to give them to the poor. And then let's see what the man does with his money, with his amazing wealth that he can help the poor with. And in verse 22, it says that this, the man's face fell and he went away sad for he had many possessions. Ah, so he didn't give his money to the poor. He just couldn't part with his stuff. He loved his stuff so much. And let's continue the story. Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? This amazed them. But Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And so the, uh, we, we have the rich young ruler here. He couldn't part with his possessions. It was so hard for him to enter the kingdom of God, to receive God's blessing in the area of finance because he just was so in love with his stuff, his low, so in love with his money. Uh, and he loved Jesus. He loved him. There was no doubt about that. But he also loved money. He just loved it a little more than Jesus. And well, actually, some speculate that in Acts later that he helped fund some of the early church, that he actually did give his money back later. But that's just a speculation. We don't know for sure. But the point is, he had the wrong idea of what money is. It's not a life force. It's not the thing that we should strive for in life. It, it, it's not something we should like bet everything in our lives on and, and worship. It is something that is just a tool. It is just a tool. It is an item. It is something we can use. So what is money? Well, the first point I want to make today is that money is not evil. 
Money is not evil. I want to get that clearly straight. It's not evil. Jesus didn't tell the man he was bad for having his possessions. He didn't. He said, he said it was difficult for him to give up those possessions. He said, and he didn't say to burn his possessions. He didn't say, hey, now I want you to go and burn all your possessions because it's evil. No, he said, use your possessions and use that money to give it to the poor. But Evan, what, what, what about that verse in the Bible that says, it, it says it's evil? I know it says, I think it says somewhere it says it's evil. Nope, I got you. I got the verse right here. 1 Timothy 6, 7 through 10 says, when we came into the world, we brought nothing. And when we die, we can take nothing out. So if we have food and clothes, we will be satisfied with that. People who want to be rich bring temptations to themselves. They are caught in a trap. They begin to want more many foolish things that will hurt them. These things ruin and destroy people. The love of money causes all kinds of evil. Some people have turned away from what we believe because they want to get more and more money. But we have caused themselves or but they have caused themselves a lot of pain and sorrow. So see, it's not money that's evil, it's the love of love of money. Money's the possession itself is not evil. The love of it is. Because when we love money, we tend to put ourselves first. We tend to get very selfish and we only want to buy things for ourselves. We only want to, we worry about our finances. And if we have enough money because we're afraid of losing it and we start putting this money before God. And so we start taking this money and it just becomes our whole life. And that's why money is, the love of money is evil, not, not money itself. Um, because it's just a possession. It's just an accessory. It's just a tool we can use. Because money is actually good. Because that's my second point. Money helps God's kingdom. It helps God's kingdom. And so it helps the mission of God on this planet. Because as we said, money runs the world. So we can't really have local churches without money. We can't feed the poor without money. We can't help people without money. So God has always used money or possessions to help fund the church, to help move his mission on earth, to help the church operate, to help the poor, to heal people. God has always used money to help others. And so have you ever given to the poor? Have you? Hasn't it felt great? Like I, I, every time I've given to the poor, I just always felt amazing because I'm helping someone else who has less fortune than I do. It should be good. You should feel great for giving money to the poor. And there's a lot of amazing ways we can give money here at LifeHouse. Uh, we have our heart for uh, the heart for giving. So we have heart for Dream Team. We have heart for ta- or missions. We have, we have heart for the house. We have so many ways that we can give here to help people, to help us further the kingdom of God, to help people know about Jesus. And we also have our Kingdom Builders team. Our Kingdom Builders team helps so that we can give towards these different areas and that it's a gift of giving to help others. And we also have our disaster relief funds. Recently, we had uh, an earthquake here in Japan and we were able to send a team to help clean up in that area. And that was amazing. It uh, It was a great time that we could help with this disaster. And so we have other ways we can help people through money, money, because money is good and money helps move God's kingdom. But money is also guided by our hearts. So the rich young ruler failed to part with his possessions. His money was too, or he was too attached to his money. He let his money guide him to his possessions. So he let his money guide his heart and he wound up buying more and more possessions. But we can focus on a greater purpose. We can let our heart guide our money to a better purpose. And so that's what we see in another story. I remember I said there was two guys. So the one was the rich young ruler. The next one we're gonna talk about is Zacchaeus. And so Zacchaeus was another man who loved money. He loved it so much that he used his job as a tax collector to steal money. He kept charging people extra and he was, he was all about getting more and more and more money. He couldn't have enough. But then he has an amazing encounter with Jesus. And we're gonna talk about that. So Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. If you know, you know. He was very, very short and he wanted to see Jesus. And so he couldn't see Jesus because he was very short. So he climbed up in this tree, got to the top of the tree, and he's just holding on to the trunk and he's just waiting for Jesus to pass by on the road. And then finally, Jesus does pass by and in all of the crowd, Jesus looks up and sees him and he talks to him. And that's where we're gonna pick up in Luke 19. And it says, when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. 
Zacchaeus, he said. Quick, come down. I must be a guest at your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and looked, took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to the great uh, guest of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Lord, if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. And Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. So see, Zacchaeus loved money, but he had a change of heart. When he met Jesus, when he had an encounter with Jesus, he all of a sudden wanted to give his money back to the poor. He understood what money should be used for. And so he gave half of his wealth. He gave half of his money to the poor, just immediately one big donation. Then he not only did that, he went back and paid everyone that he had hurt, that he had stolen from. And not only that, he paid three times more than what they owed back. So four times total. So he paid all of these people back. He gave all, almost, I'm pretty sure he gave most of his money away. <laughs> like that sounds like a lot of money. Um, and so he did what the rich young ruler could not do because he discovered the importance of money. He, he, un he understood the importance of helping others because he believed Jesus. He trusted Jesus. And he, when he trusted Jesus, he was able to part with his money. He understood that it wasn't for him. He had acquired so much money so he could help others. See, he didn't let his heart guide his, or he didn't let his money guide his heart to more possessions, to more money. Instead, he used his heart to guide the money towards a mission, to guide the money towards a purpose. And so I have my personal story with giving. When I was going to a church back in the day, and it was uh, kind of the first time I'd gotten back into church, and, and I was still kind of I was doing all the things. I was praying. I was, I was journaling. I was, I was serving on the dream team, but I was afraid of giving my money. I had, and granted, I had just gotten out of college. I was in a little bit of debt, and I really thought that this big job that I had just landed that paid me more than any other job I had ever had, um, that I would need to hold on to this money. And if I didn't hold on to it, and if I wasn't careful with it, then it would disappear, and I would be out on the street. And I was so afraid of losing my money. But then we had this giving coming up at church. And, and granted, I wasn't tithing at this time. I, w I had not tried tithing yet. I didn't trust God with my finances, if I'm being honest. But this big giving came up. And, and the equivalent here at LifeHouse is heart for the house. And so basically the idea was we want to give to the house to have a venue so that we could help other people. And, and I felt God just lead me through my journaling. I was reading the Bible and I just got really like, every verse I was reading seemed to be about give, give, give. And I was like, ah, I don't... I don't know if I can, but I said, I'm going to take a big step. And, and it was a pretty large sum of money. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to pay this money. I'm, I'm going to give the church this money. I'm going to give God this money. And when I did, I was super scared and I kind of freaked out for a little bit. But as soon as the money left my hands, it, well, okay, it was an app. I wasn't, I wasn't giving it. So as soon as I hit send on the app and I hit give, then I felt a wave of just peace. I was like, wow, that felt really good to give. And it felt really good to give back to God and, and to the local church. And, and uh, it didn't feel like losing money. I thought it was gonna feel like I lost my money, but it didn't. It just felt like I did something good. And so, uh, and so I just went on and it was around November. So Christmas was coming up and around the Christmas week, so several weeks later, I get this check, this bonus check from my company that I was working for. And it was the almost the exact amount that I had given in the giving. I was like, whoa, God, why did you do that? That was amazing. You gave me my money back. And, and that from that point, I understood that I could trust God with my finances. And, and God will always provide. He always will provide for me. He always will provide for you. Now, he may not give back the exact money. That was the only time that ever happened that God refunded me, basically. That was the only time that I ever saw that money come back into my hands. But it was a way for God to tell me that he's got my back that he's got me, he's got me, and he's gonna provide for me, and I don't need to worry about finances anymore. So from then on, I started tithing, and I learned that tithing was amazing. I started tithing every month, and I started trusting God more and more. I started giving to the poor. I started giving to other givings, and it was just an amazing change in my life because I started trusting Jesus. I started trusting God with my finances. And so maybe you were like me. Maybe you were like the rich young ruler. Maybe you think, I can't part with my money, Evan. I, I, I'm, I'm too scared. I won't have enough. And 10% and is a 
big amount a month to give to tithing. It's, it's, what if I need it later? What, what, if, what if I mess up? And I just want to like clarify right now, if you are in some kind of debt and it, like, don't, don't go in more debt, but if you have plenty, give. And if you want to understand the blessing of God in finance, give. If you struggle with this, it means, it means you're just, there's just this disconnect between you and God. It means you just may not trust him enough to, with your finances, but, but we can all be like Zacchaeus. We can have a change of heart. And we can understand that when we give our money to the poor, when we give our money to God, that he can do amazing things with it. We can help so many people. We can let God help it move his kingdom. We can give back to the kingdom of God because he gives us so much in return. And you don't even have to be a Christian yet to give. You can be generous. Right now, you can practice generous living, generous thinking right now. Your heart can guide your money to the poor. Give to your local food banks. Give to those who can't eat. Give to your homeless shelters around you. And if you don't have any around you, you can give to a national or a global relief organization, like anyone who feeds or helps the poor. Um, And if you don't know where to start and you're you're like, there's too many options, we got one right here for you. And it's called Tejas Asia. It's our heart for missions giving. We do it every January, but you can give it any time. And if you're thinking, I really want to help someone, Tejas Asia is a great way to start because we give to these kids that they are in the slums of India and they, they don't have food or they don't have like a solid food or, or education. And, and so we are able to give to this so they can help kids come off the street and they can be impacted by Jesus and, and they can receive the love that, that they may not be receiving from others. And it's just a great way to help them eat and to help them get education so they can get a great start in life. So that's a, that's a great place to start giving to the poor if you would like to. Uh, and this brings us to the grace and the truth of our message today. So here's the grace. The grace is that God provides for us even if we don't give money back to him, even if we don't give to the poor. He still provides for us because he's a good God and he loves you. So that job you have, your, your income you have, that's from God and he, and he loves you. So he's gonna keep giving that to you. And But the truth is, so that's the grace part. The truth is we should be thankful for that. And we should feel led to give back to God, to give back to God through tithing, to give back to the poor, to help other people who have less money than us. We should trust him with our finances. That's the truth. The grace is God gives no matter what. The truth is we should feel a move to give back. And so Luke 6, 38 says, give to others and you will receive. You will be given much. It will be poured out into your hands, more than you can hold. You will be given so much that it will spill out into your lap. The way you give to others is the way God will give to you. I love that wording. The way you give to others is the way God will give to you. If you are generous, if you wanna help the poor, if you wanna help those in need, if you wanna give back to God through the local church, God's gonna bless you. The way you give to that, he's gonna give back to you the same way. So if you're happy to give, if you're, if you're just excited to give and you love giving, God's gonna give in the same way back to you. I love the way that verse reads. And so I got three quick application points for you guys. And that's to how do I start giving, Evan? How do I start giving? Well, here you go. Number one, give something. Give anything. Give any amount. You can start by tithing. And if you don't have to give 10% on the first time, you can try 1%. And when you try 1% and you give, give anything, just 1%, You can start trusting God a little more and you'll see that every month God's gonna bless you and God's gonna come through and you're gonna trust him more and more just by giving 1%. And eventually you can go to 2% and then 3%. And then when you feel comfortable enough, you can go all the way up to 10%. But I guarantee you by then you'll be already giving so much because you'll understand what it's like to give to others. So number one is give something, give anything. Number two is give often. We, we wanna, if we're gonna tithe, let's tithe every month. Let's be consistent. Let's make it a priority. And if you bless others, bless them often. Maybe you can bring donuts to the office every Monday and you're, and you're just the donut guy or gal now. You're just the donut person and you get to bring it, but bring it often, bring it every Monday, make it a thing. Uh, if you are paying, maybe you could pay for your neighbor's public transportation some days, like maybe once a month, you're like, hey, I'm gonna cover your, your bus fees or your train fees, or, or maybe you can, bring your uh, wife home flowers every month uh, or your spouse or what you could buy them candy or something like just make it often make it consistent set a time for it and then the last one is give randomly yes 
Don't be specific sometimes. Just if you feel like this is something I should give to, give to it. Maybe that's the heart for givings here at LifeHouse. Maybe you, maybe you think like, oh, I really want to help the next generation or I want to help the dream team. And, and the way they were telling me they were going to give or they were going to buy, I, I want to help people buy that. I want to help with the Kingdom Builders team. I, I just want to give randomly today. Uh, maybe it's a random act of kindness. Maybe you're in the line at Starbucks and you want to pay for the person's coffee behind you just, just randomly. Just any kind of random, per- like you want to cover someone else's table when they're, when they're dining with you in the same restaurant. But, or maybe you want to give one time to a company that helps feed the less fortunate. Basically, give something random. Don't, don't make it always stuck in one time. Those, those set times are great, but don't wait to give. Give it now. Give it any time that you want to give. So that was the three points. Give something, give often, and give randomly. And I have one more verse for you before we go. And that's Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So if you seek God first with your finances, if you seek him first and you love him, you give to him, then he will give you everything you need. Let's pray. So God, I just thank you for all of your blessings on us, that you give us income, you give us food, you give us just everything we need in life to survive. And we just thank you for that blessing today. And I ask that you help those who are kind of struggling today, they maybe want to give, but they don't know what the first step is. Would you give them their first step today? Would you help them take that first step today? Would you give them the confidence to give today and that we would understand that that when we give to the poor, when we give to you, it's an amazing experience and a blessing for us as well, but we also get to help others. So would you help those who want to change their heart to giving today? And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, there's one more group of people I want to pray for today, and that's those who don't know Jesus yet. Maybe you heard this message and you were thinking, well, I would love to know Jesus. I would love to know more. I would love to give to God all the time, but I don't know if I know Jesus yet. Well, this opportunity is for you because Jesus, he was a giving person as well. He was very generous. In fact, he gave his life for us. He didn't have to die. He lived a perfect life, but because we sinned, he decided to come live a perfect life die for us on a cross and raise again so that we could live with him in eternity. And so that's the generous, the generosity of Jesus. He was generous. And so today, if you want to accept that, if you want to know Jesus as your savior, to say that Jesus, yes, I believe that you died for me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for raising again so that I could have life. If that's you today, I'm going to count to three and I want you to make that decision right now. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus says, thank you for those that made that decision right now. I ask that you wipe their past clean, that all of their sins are gone and their mistakes are gone, that you would start a new life for them today, an amazing life that starts with you in relationship with you, a generous life with you, Jesus. We thank you for the decision they made. We ask that you bless them today. And and this is the best decision they'll ever make. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's message. Tune in next week for the next one in the series. Bye-bye.